So that's the end of that. <laughs> I think one thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about these four-year institutions and things like that, when you're in a course, when you're trying to judge the classes, think about this. Would you be able to have a four-year university? Let's say you're at a two-year institution or a four-year institution. If there is a course they're offering, would you be able to have a full-time institution that focuses only on that topic? If you can't really see that happening, then there's a good chance that course doesn't have to be part of a four-year university, uh, a, a university experience or a two-year university experience, let alone the PhD type of things. Like the same way I'm saying you can have a school of economics. If you can have a school of sex work online and things like that, school of, a sex work university, that, that's something that, would you think that would be a general studies? Like, can you make an argumentation that because you can have a school that focuses just on general studies, I mean, on, on sex work, and it's not, it's not a four-year institution. I didn't actually click the actual details to see what it was, but I just saw an article about it. But would you consider that to be one of the general studies? Why shouldn't that be a general studies course? Why shouldn't we take intro to webcamming, to being a web, to being a cam girl, like 101? <laughs> <laughs> should, should that be something that's a, that's a regular thing, just like English 101? Because I do imagine they could be entirely just this school just teaches English. I was like Chicago School of Economics. That's what they teach. Like CIA, the uh, Culinary Institute of, of America, teaches uh, culinary things, food, cooking, and things like that. The schools I went to, the Institute of European Design, that school just teaches different design things. So I, I think that's kind of what we're looking at in the future, where there's going to be more specialization in that. And then people will be encouraged to pick courses that – they're more, they're selecting, let's pick this for this. The payment system will be able to there. When I did go to the university that I did for my postgraduate the Institute of European Design, that one, I had an idea of the entire course work that I was going to do before I signed up for the course. It's just the current system, they, 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 it is quite problematic. And I think for most people, they weren't quite sure of the general education courses they took. And I don't know how many people out there, as we mentioned before, have can practically say that there is something they're using in their day-to-day -day life, productive day-to-day -day life, that could only have been learned by taking one of those general studies courses that they were made to take in order to get their actual major and actual other thing that they're doing in their life. Well, and, and also, too, the thing about well-rounded people, like, I do agree with that in principle, like, Silas knows by now I'm not into sports because I grew up surrounded by people who talked about sports nonstop. So like it drove me nuts. And then, but what's funny is that some of my friends like you and as well as Rose, Abraham, other people, they're into sports, but they can talk about a number of other things. And that's why I'm friendly with them because we can talk on a variety of subjects. So yeah. I do like the idea of well-rounded people, but the question is, do the general studies courses actually do this? Especially again, we'll get into the future chapter on cheating. If students are just fudging it for the sake of getting the grade and they don't remember any of it, are you really creating well-rounded people anyway, or are you just taking their time and money and giving virtually nothing back? That's that's like, like I agree in principle, yeah, I want more well-rounded people, but is the system as it works actually achieving that? I don't see the evidence that it is. Uh. I, I just need to think off my head. If you, on, on average, the the freshman year, or fr three semesters, you're taking general studies course where you actually get into your major, which is about a year and a half. If If on average that cost is... Two thousand dollars, maybe on average. Yeah. What if that person just took those two thousand dollars and traveled around the country a bit and got little side jobs here and there, learning, meeting, seeing different parts of the country, meeting people, interacting with people of different ages, mm. and just becoming part of the nation, and understanding more about themselves. Wouldn't that make them more well-rounded than spending those one and a half years in English core, English one hundred and one, algebra one hundred and one? Uh, Webcam girl in 101. <laughs> <laughs> I think they, they might be a way to to get something where, yeah. and then by that time, once that person comes back, maybe they've seen more practical examples of how to actually make a living, how to live in different places, and now they'll get a better idea and say, okay, now I'm going to be in a better position to actually pick a major and pick a specialization and get into that. I, I don't know, and maybe even you can include the teachers in this. You can have yeah. the teachers who would be teaching the general studies courses be chaperones of sorts. And then they just yeah. do travel things around the country. You can even keep the universities, keep the dorms. Yeah. Just in every university, instead of just saying, these kids are going to be prisoner to our universities, 
you have sister universities in different regions that work together and you have one of your dormitories that has reduced cost for those kids to come around and move around over that one and a half years to actually meet different places and see different things. And they, they could be different ways where maybe you have a school like that where people come and then for one semester, they're at the Culinary Institute of America who has some partnership and then they're working in the cafeteria. So they're not yeah. directly learning the high level stuff, but they're interacting with people who are professionals who are learning that high level stuff while cooking just very basic stuff and just giving people basic food. During the day, they travel around New York City and they visit restaurants and things. So that's this other ways to do it, this yeah. whole idea. I don't understand why we're still stuck on that whole thing that after K through 12, people have to enter university immediately and start on that and pick what they're going yeah. to do for the rest of their life. It just seems, it seems disingenuous. And I'm, yeah. I'm not quite sure why people are stuck in that mentality. And, and that sort of, you know, I get, this is my paranoid conspiracy side, but this gets into like, do you just want these as indoctrination mills? Because it's like, oh. what? Because it's like, it's it's like, why do you feel people have to? Like, again, I, I keep saying over and over, I'm not saying nobody should go to school for anything. I think doctors should go to school. I think academics should go to school. But if you're just going to pick some random thing, you don't, you'll you be like, well, gender study sounds interesting. What are you going to do with that? I don't know. I'll figure it out. It, I, I don't see a single case for how or why that's beneficial. And people will be like, it was a fun time. And I'm like, okay, but is it, that's a lot of time and money to just have a fun time. Like, I think some of the Praxis guys, like I think Isaac Morehouse wrote like, you and some friends could get together, re like rent out a house near a college, go to parties, even ha host parties there, go to events and just work. And it's like, you'd probably benefit your future a lot more than that than just fool around in school and not remember anything you've learned and go massively into debt. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, going back to, to what we mentioned to start, I, I know the dealers, the dealers who in this state are the teachers, as you said, they're rent seeking, they're yes. trying to rent seeking. And some of them, most of them are just trying to make a living and put food on the table and support their lifestyle and their kids and their wives and things like that. Then they rationalize that they're also teaching kids. So, of course, they would want students in as fast as possible. But this other idea that I thought of, if you give them other options, I think some of them, a lot of them would still do that. But when it comes down to the government and the state, I do understand they're dealers. Like the dealers know yeah. what drugs do. The dealers are trying to get addicts and users. What, what I was wondering was why are the users, us, the general public, why are we still in that mentality that that's the way things should be? As mentioned, we haven't mentioned in this part of the conversation, but we talked about it before. I forget who said it. We were talking about how the industry schooling, this compulsory schooling thing is the experiment. It's yeah. not the inverse where the homeschooling, the remote schooling, that kind of situation is is the is the test, is the, is the, the brand new thing. It's like no, the the whole people going to one location and sitting there for extended amounts of years, that is the experiment. So, is that experiment working? Is this general education part of the experiment something we should restart and continue and go forward? And other countries should pick up on? Not quite sure. I think there's still like question mark out there. Question mark for those of you who are listening. Yeah. And, and, and as I keep saying, I mean, don't treat the teachers as a sacred class. They're as self-interested as anyone else. It's like if as, as we've gone through here and I'm sure there, Brian Kaplan, other people have written, written stuff about this as well. If they if we know that these things don't do what they're supposed to, they keep pushing for them anyway. What other purpose does it serve? It's like it, at some point you have to deliver results. Like I thought about this in my own head. Like if I hire an exterminator company for a restaurant, we keep seeing pests. You just fire the company because they're not doing what they're supposed to. It's like you don't keep, you know, if they keep telling me, oh, well, it's beneficial. Well, this will help you down the road. It's like, no, you have to give me evidence for why that's the case. You, I can't just take that on faith. Yeah. 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 Thank you for listening. This has been a clip from an actual longer recording that I'll try to leave a link to on the screen or somewhere around here where you're listening to this. Presents. <laughs> Presents. 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 Peasants. Okay. <laughs> okay.